Hack at Build, Microsoft announced Windows Copilot. While Microsoft 365 Copilot, which in my opinion is more exciting as a proposition than Windows Copilot, continues to only be available to select enterprises through an invite-only early access program. Last week, Windows Copilot was released to the dev channel of the Windows Insider program, meaning anyone can get their hands on it. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can get and test Windows Copilot and take you on a tour of its capabilities as they stand at this point. I have added chapter markers so you can skip to whatever section you're interested in. First, if Windows Copilot or Copilot in general is new to you, let's briefly review what this is all about. Announced back at Build, Windows Copilot is the latest in an ever-growing list of Copilot-branded AI tools being rolled out across a great number of Microsoft's products. Copilots bring the power of GPT-4 AI into Microsoft's products, giving useful contextual augmentation capabilities to the types of work an end user might be doing. So your Power Apps Copilot has subtly different capabilities than your Dynamics 365 Copilot, but all these tools go together to empower workers to be more productive, more focused on where they add value, and less focused on mundane busy work. Now, I know it's mundane busy work, but I'd really appreciate it if you're getting value from this video to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel. And if you know others who might benefit from this information, please do share the video with your network. Windows Copilot was announced with great fanfare with this overview video, which was first shared at the Build conference. It shows a text-based tool that is a helper for Windows, bringing together built-in Windows capabilities like adjusting dark or light mode, alongside interacting with apps that are installed on Windows, like Adobe products in the shown examples, or Teams. But this announcement also left a whole bunch of unanswered questions, like to what degree will this actually enable you to interact with Windows? Turning on dark mode isn't a killer use case. Or whether this will integrate or rely upon other Copilot products, particularly Microsoft 365 Copilot. The announcement of Windows Copilot came shortly after the announcement of the discontinuation of Cortana, which was a voice assistant that had been built right into Windows. You can't help but imagine that these two sets of capabilities very strongly align, and there are particular use cases where the opportunities shown for Windows Copilot would stack up very well with voice control, not least for Windows users experiencing certain disabilities. However, as it stands, the default interface shared is text-based, much like Bing Chat. There are still many questions to be answered about many of Microsoft's Copilot products, but with the preview release of Windows Copilot, we can check another off the list that we've started to get our hands on. Will this group of products radically transform our work lives, or will this be another overhyped technology that fails to deliver on its promise? Let's learn how to get started with Windows Copilot and see where the future may be taking us. So while Copilot in Windows is now available for testing, it's only available to Windows insiders and is currently only in the dev channel, which means effectively it's two steps of quality assurance removed from being ready for production use. This means that you should not, unless you're very brave or you don't really rely on your PC for anything important, install this version of Windows on your primary PC. But for many, there isn't an endless supply of test hardware just sitting around. So how can you try Windows Insider Build safely? The first option is to download an ISO file you can use to either install the Windows 11 preview on a secondary PC or on a locally hosted virtual machine. So we're gonna head over to the Windows Insider website. And the first thing that you need to do is register here as an insider. So, I'm going to get started. I'm going to go to the quick start guide. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can either register with a normal Microsoft account, um, like a, a, an Outlook.com address or a Hotmail.com address or whatever email you've connected to it, um, which just registers you for the normal Insider program. Or there is a Windows Insider program for business. Now, while you could do either of these, what I found is if you're trying to download the ISO image, 
then you're going to want to use a Microsoft account as there seems to be some error that happens and it doesn't recognize that you're signed in with the registered account if you use a work or business and Azure Active Directory account. So just be aware of that and your mileage on this may vary as this may have been something specific in my case or it may just be an error that's going to get fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click register now. I'm going to sign in and I am signed into a, um, an Outlook account that I created for this purpose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to register. And then once I'm registered, I can go ahead and start. So you can see I'm now in this begin to preview Windows section. Um, and the option that I want is Windows Insider Preview ISO. And you can see I can download um, an ISO image following these instructions. I select an addition. Um, I'm going to want the dev build and then I'm going to click confirm and I'm going to choose my language. Confirm that. And then I have a link to download my Windows 11. And you can see it's about a five gigabyte download so it's going to take a, a little bit of time depending on what your internet connection is. Now you've got that ISO file, you can use it to set up Windows 11 Preview anywhere you like. Just be aware that the machine needs to meet minimum requirements for Windows 11, which may exceed any old hardware you have laying around. Either way, you can install on bare metal or create a virtual machine using something like Hyper-V. In my opinion, neither of these options are really the easiest way to do this. I don't personally like running a lot of Hyper-V VMs locally, and I no longer run any on-premises servers that would be appropriate for this use. Far easier for me, and probably for many of you, is just spinning up a VM for as long as you need it in Azure, and then getting rid of it as soon as you're done. Okay, so here we are in the Azure portal, and I've just created a resource group for this demonstration. And in this resource group, I'm going to create a new resource. I'm going to search for Windows 11, and I'm going to select the Windows 11 Preview. And I'm just going to go for the 22H2 Pro. And here I can pick a name for my, uh, my VM, so uh, I just call it Copilot Demo VM. Uh, I don't need any redundancy. And I'm going to go ahead and leave um, RDP open. And I do have a license, so I can go ahead. So I just want to come through to management um, and I want to turn on um, Azure AD login. I'm going to log in with my Azure AD account. Um, if you don't want to log in with an Azure AD account, you can just leave this. And then we're just going to review and create. So once your deployment is complete, you can jump over to the resource. And here we are in the virtual machine. So the next thing that I want to do is just jump into access control. And I want to add a role assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add a new role assignment. And the role assignment I want is Virtual Machine Administrator Login. You can also use Virtual Machine User Login. These allow you to actually log into the machine. So I've selected my own user account for this and then I'm going to review and assign. And so now you can see this role has been added here. So with that role added, we should now be ready to use the virtual machine. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to it, download the RDP file. So here we are in our VM. So there are a couple of things that we need to do in order to get Windows Copilot working. The first one is that we're going to right click on our start button. We're going to go to settings and then we're going to jump into Windows Update. We want to take a look at the Windows Insider program. Now it's going to ask me to turn on optional diagnostics. So I need to jump in to do that. I can turn these on and then I can go back to the Insider program. And now I'm going to click on Get Started. I'm going to link the account that I'm logged in with. And I'm going to go ahead and select the Dev Channel and click Continue. Now I will say I'm not sure whether it's because I'm doing this in a VM or because it's just a problem. But this interface to get into the Insider program is one of the most buggy interfaces that I have seen in Windows for an extremely long time. Um, and I have found that it just stalls out 
you then have to close down the settings panel, you go back into it, you try this a few times and eventually it gets there, but its default position seems to be to stall out a few times. So if it does that for you, just close it down, run the uh, same process again, um, and eventually it does get there. I can't get any rhyme or reason to it, and hopefully this is something that um, Microsoft fixes sooner rather than later. So once you've selected Dev, it just gives you this warning, and then you can continue on um, and you can restart your device to finish. So once you've restarted and you're back into Windows, we're going to head back into Settings again. We're going to go to Windows Update and we're going to check for updates. And you can see there's a number of updates that it's found, including this one, the uh, Windows Insider Preview 23 493 build and that's the uh, minimum build that you need in order to see Windows Copilot. So once that's all installed you can go ahead and restart your virtual machine. So once your machine has restarted you'll see down in the bottom right corner that you're seeing the build of the um, Insider Dev build that you've got on your machine. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is open up Microsoft Edge and we're going to want to head into our settings we're going to go to about microsoft edge and it's going to check for an update and you can see that we're now getting an update if you tried to do this before you got the preview build it wouldn't actually find an update for you you have to have the preview build on there first you can see it's now updating and this is to get the two requirements. So the requirements to see Windows Copilot is that you're running the latest version of the dev build and you're running the latest version of Microsoft Edge. You need um, version uh, 115 um, of Edge to be able to see Windows Copilot. And then once that update is applied, we're going to restart Edge. And you can see we're now on version 115 and it says that we are up to date. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to restart the PC again. So you can now see after applying those updates, magically what appears at the bottom is your Copilot preview icon. So we can go ahead and click on this. And what appears is this window that is pinned to the side of your screen. And what's in this window looks surprisingly like Bing Chat. And it even says Copilot with Bing Chat. So I could do anything in here that I would normally do with Bing Chat. But what I'm kind of interested in is what can I do that I can't do with Bing Chat that is part of that demo that was shown to me um, and was in that video that um, we saw earlier on in this video. So let's go ahead and start with one of the first prompts that was thrown at Copilot in that demo. So how can I adjust my system to get work done? So it gives me a response, but this certainly isn't the type of response that we saw in the Windows Copilot demo. But that's kind of what we expect. This is a demo that very much is just in its infancy right now. This is a preview. Um, and so what we're seeing here is what it's going to look like, but we don't have all the functionality there. So let's try something it can do. So we're going to turn on dark mode and it finds the right action. You see how this is behaving a little bit differently to how it behaved when on the first prompt. And we're going to say yes, turn on dark mode, and then everything changes to dark mode. Um, and it can do other things like turn on do not disturb. And you can see it's found the right action. I'm going to say yes, and it's going to turn on do not disturb. So those are a couple of things that it can do right now. And obviously it's confined in this window. Now, this window, if we close this and let's open up Edge. I just want to show you something that's changed in here as well. So 
This uh, button, which we've got used to in that it brings up an edge uh, panel in, uh, or brings up a Bing chat panel in edge, I should say. Um, if we click on this now, what we actually get back is our Copilot panel. So all we're really doing is taking the existing Bing chat panel that we had in Edge and we're pushing it out into the system. Um, there is no longer a, a Bing chat panel that sits within Edge here. And we can use Bing chat over here and we can also uh, have these actions that are going to be linked into different applications and to Windows. So it's kind of interesting to see that, that this is very tied into Edge and very tied into Bing. And I think that probably both of those things are not necessarily what everyone would have anticipated when first seeing the, um, the demo video that we saw at Build. Um, but certainly you can play around with this now. You can bring that Bing chat experience into Windows. Um, it doesn't do a great deal yet, um, but if you want to have a play around with it, um, hopefully uh, this has shown you how to get up and running with it and just to get started. So that's really all we have to look at right now. But we know from the release video and other information that a lot more is coming and that this is going to be a lot more functional. I do think that there are questions this preview creates. The biggest one for me is whether it is always going to be reliant on Bing Chat or whether it will default to leveraging business chat on a PC with a Microsoft 365 Copilot licensed user. To make this useful in a business environment, I think that would be critical, and frankly, it would be confusing for the inbuilt Windows Copilot capabilities to be tied to Bing, while everything in the local Office apps would be tied to Microsoft 365 Copilot. I'm sure there will be users who are going to make a big deal out of this being deployed inside an Edge browser window. But I think it's inevitable, as the line between local applications and the web disappears, that Edge becomes bestowed with certain capabilities inside Windows that are not enjoyed by Chrome or other browsers. Now, whether regulators in areas like the European Union will agree with that position in the long term is a different story, but I certainly think it makes some sense. For me, the real question comes down to how useful is this really going to be? I know my way around Windows pretty well, and I don't think it's really ever going to be quicker for me to type what I want over just doing it. But I'm probably not the target audience for this. But it's important to recognize that having Copilot turn on dark mode is a very different type of task than summarizing emails or designing an app. I understand using an AI assistant where that help is going to save me 30 minutes, or it's even going to save me 30 seconds, but I see no value in typing a command where at best there's going to be very little time saving and at worst the AI will struggle to do exactly what I want. For me, I'd rather that Windows Copilot be a bit more proactive and offer solutions based on what it sees me doing and what flow of work it gets used to seeing over time. The benefit I see in having this tied in on the operating system level rather than as an extension in an app like Word is there's the potential to have a holistic view of all of my PC use. We already have a tool called Process Advisor in Power Platform that enables you to record how a process is done by multiple team members on multiple PCs and to create recommendations on automation. If Windows Copilot could be an always-on version of Process Advisor that looks over your shoulder and makes things easier for you over time, then I think it would be a killer feature. It would also be a privacy nightmare for some, but I do think that there would be ways of approaching that kind of tool that could maintain privacy and give users control over their data while adding a great deal of value proactively. I'd love to learn what you think about this preview so far and about my ideas of where this technology should head. Leave me your feedback down in the comments. I'll be interested to read what you think. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, bye bye.